guys have fun? Was it good? Okay, good. Um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, Rob and I have never presented together. And also, he has not seen my slide deck. I have not seen what he's going to do. Uh, we've, we've tweeted a bit, oh, maybe I'll do this. And then in the middle, you do some of that. And in the end, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. We can work that out. Um, some, of our, some of us may or may not work. So it's going to be fun because some of our stuff may or may not work. So we're going to have fun. Hopefully, it's going to be a little bit of a laugh, and hopefully, you're going to learn a lot about that bear and pepper. The wrong one. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I. I talk about AppVare and Pester and continuous integration, and some people are like, no, run away. <laughs> I'm, I'm practicing here, right? Yeah, it's still singing. I think we don't want these two microphones on at the same time. Yeah, now it's better, right? Yeah. I, I can just take this off when you want to say something and do an interview style kind of thing. Yeah. Rob likes to hug people anyway, so it's, good. it's an excellent hugger. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't have said that in public, should I? No. <laughs> Everybody knows anyway. <laughs> so, um, let's start with the beginning. My name is André, I'm a Dutch guy. Um, who has been in my sessions before already? Oh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the only one... Uh, wow. You, well, yeah. All those people love you. Or they think that was... He doesn't know anything about PowerShell, but that was funny. I yeah. still just... Uh, we'll get it again, uh, <laughs> says the other Dutch guy. <laughs> cool, so then uh, you know who I am, Rob will introduce himself later. Um, what I can tell you about Rob, if you want to tweet him, um, uh, his, his web, or if you want to contact him, his website, SQL DBA with a beard. And he wanted to do this on Twitter as well, so he had SQL DBA with a beard on Twitter. But Twitter cuts that off, there's too many characters. So he was for a while SQL DBA with a bear. How we mean? <laughs> and uh, I think you now SQL DBA with beard. So the A is moved, not the D. Right? Um, so about I think it was half a year ago or something. I uh, wrote code. No, it's not half a year ago. I started half a year ago, and a while ago. I wrote code and I submitted it to the DBA tools team. I did what developers call, <laughs> I'm a DBA, uh, developers call a pull request. And this felt weird. I even tweeted about it. Uh, I tweeted something like, I just did my first pull request in my life. This might, uh, developers may laugh about this, but for an old school database administrator, this is a thing. Um, I'm feeling like a hipster here. Uh, Try to grow a beard. This is two weeks in. <laughs> <laughs> Completely useless. Um, but yeah, so, and then slowly but surely, because of that DBA tool stuff, and what DBA tools are or is, we'll, we'll see about that later. Uh, Rob is going to do a nice demo about that. Um, I, I, is that a microphone on, or should I just stay here a bit? Because I have the feeling that if I walk here, hmm. Oh, yeah. That's all. I'll stay here a bit. I hate it when I can't move. I'll do this a bit. Then. <laughs> Better? Um, so as, a, as an old school DBA, um, I've started using these CI, CD servers and machines and, and processes to, to test my own code. Normally, uh, how a DBA tests his own SQL code is you grab your code, you, you open Management Studio, you put it in there, and you hit F5. And uh, for good measure, you do it again. Uh, that's about the way DBAs test their stuff, right? And, and I've started to use um, various, uh, to started to play with various of the kinds of these uh, CI CD systems, uh, like Team City and what, oh, there's a whole lot of them. And the one that stuck with me, that was Abveyor. It's, um, they have a paid and a free one. So, uh, this is not a commercial for these guys. I don't get paid for, by these guys. So and anything we'll do, we'll try to stick to the free version. I actually have a paid version, so it responds faster and whatnot. But uh, let's talk about the whole thing. Uh, but this is not a commercial for Abbey, right? Um, what is Abbey? Ooh, yes. 
This is no, no clickers. I hate clickers. <laughs> I I like to walk. I I used the clicker once and I just stood there and I was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you want to go back or put the laser pointer on and then I had one of these fancy ones that started buzzing when you have 10 minutes time left. What is that? So I, I looked completely confused on stage, even worse than normal. Um, this, this is kind of normal for me. Um, so we're going to look at a few of these things. What, so what is AppVare and why is it different than all the other ones? Um, we're going to take a peek inside what you get and what you can do with it. And um, I'm going to do a really simple demo, just my T SQL code that I wrote for something. And something. Oh, the sun is coming out. <laughs> Quick, there's geeks in here. Close the. <laughs> the sun is coming out. <laughs> so the, um, I'm going to do a really simple demo, and then Rob is going to come in and do a, um, an overview of DBA tools and how they uh, test that with AppVayer and how that all works. It's a bit more com uh, complicated uh, scenario. And then after that, I uh, hope we still have a bit of time. Yes, Rob. Rob is quickly getting the DBA tool stuff up because he didn't know he was doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Or something else. If you want to de demo something completely different, it's fine. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that out loud. Just do sign language or something. Uh, then, yeah, <laughs> this one. <laughs> no DBA tool. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to try and think outside the box a bit because sometimes there's more complicated scenarios that I have at work that I want to test. I have most of my SQL servers are uh, double 18 core clusters with half a terabyte of memory and big SAN and, and um, I actually have those available as testing machines for myself which is pretty cool um, but not everywhere I have that, certainly not at home. Um, so I needed a way to maybe go from Avair to Azure or something. Uh, I have tried around a bit and we'll see if I succeeded or not and what I ran into. Now, bring some water. I made a quite a complicated architecture picture of what Avair is and does. I'm very proud of this. I'm not an architect. Let me ask first, who has used Avair before? Oh, okay. Handful of people. Now, you, you guys are going to be bored in the first part. <laughs> maybe bored the whole time. I don't know. I hope not. Uh, or maybe you can help us if you see something that we didn't think of. That would be cool. Now, well, really simplified, obviously. But what happens is you put your code in GitHub. And this was also a first for me. I would ne never dream that I put my code in GitHub. I feel like such a hipster. But um, oh well. It works for me. I like it. Um, you put your code in GitHub, uh, GitHub, and as soon as you do that, AppVayer picks it up um, and it fires up um, a build machine for you. This is So far, this is the same as every other uh, CI tool around, right? They, they find an available agent, multiple agents here. Um, can you spot these agents? You know who they are? Uh, if you don't know who they are, I'm going to feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent answer. <laughs> hmm. So the big difference with all the other CI CD tools, as far as I've seen, maybe I have not studied them well enough, you tell me, but as far as I've seen, what AppVayer does, it creates a brand new VM for you with, with a build agent in it. And after you're done with your test, it throws it away. Other CI CD tools, they, you do a cleanup afterwards. And you have an existing machine that you do your testing on. You built your test machine, you put the agent on, and then it's available for your tool to use. But you have to do a, a teardown, a cleanup. Am I making sense so far? Is this correct, what I'm saying? Have you found other tools that can do this as well? No? OK. Um, which, to me, I like this because my test needs to be clean. I want uh, no influence from outside. I would love to start with a super clean install of SQL Server every time. That is so cool that I can do that. But then I would have to recreate the whole environment and then run my test. And that's a lot of work. So um, this is why I like AppFair. It does this for me automatically. Every time 
I check in code, it creates a completely new build machine for me and runs stuff. Now, you see two sets of agents here, and they're the same, but what happens is up there, yes, hello, Rachel. Yeah. It is really easy to tell in AppVair that you need a SQL server. Yes, well, it's a really awesome question. All good questions are things that are going to be answered later in the presentation. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it will show you how that works because I needed a SQL server in AppVair and that's the simplest ever. Um, they have two locations where they have their uh, VMs ready. One is in a Google data center for the, I think they use that only for the free version. They get the cheapest VMs available that they can make and still work nicely, I think. And the other one is, I forgot. There's another data center that they're using. It's not Azure. It's, um, it's some, some data center that they're using. Uh, it's not Amazon, not Azure, not, not Google, but they're using something else. This is where the paid versions are. And what the trick that they're using to make this a bit fast, they don't build your server whenever you check something in. They have a pool available. So they keep building these things. And then when you, something comes in the queue to test it, they grab one and start testing immediately and throw away the machine. And in the background, they keep making new machines. They do this more aggressively on the paid version than on the free version, I think. Rob, do you know if it takes much longer to wait on the free version than the paid version? I'm a diva, I just pay for it right away. I hate waiting, um, unless I need coffee. Yeah. Then everybody else can wait until I have my coffee. That's how it works, right? Um, but uh, no, I've seen um, seconds, sometimes minutes. Uh, you, you, maybe there's sometimes there's companies that have a, a whole batch of tests kicking off and they run out of the, the pool empties or dries out. There's a peak moment or something and I had to wait for a few minutes because they need to create new machines. Uh, but that only happens once or twice uh, in the six or eight weeks that I've been using it now. And usually it's seconds. Now this being a demo, this is probably when it's going to happen, right? This is when you're going to see uh, how long is the session? An hour? So it will take an hour and five minutes. An hour and 20 minutes to kick, kick off. Ah, okay, we're going to see what, that, <laughs> what happens. So, and then basically you tell which, um, which build machine you want. They have a few available, and the one that I'm using is called Visual Studio 2017. Not because I like Visual Studio, but because it is SQL, so, uh, so, uh, sorry, because it is Windows Server 2016 based, and it has SQL Server 2016 on it. And uh, I can just activate uh, SQL Server by putting one line of code in a YAML file somewhere. Then it will boot up with SQL Server. It's really cool. Um, does everybody understand my architectural picture? Did I make this complicated enough? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's show how that what that looks like. I'm not starting to beat. No. Cool. So, <coughs> hey, Bob. Hey, hi. I'm good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that was DBA tools. I'm switching. Does it work? No signal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Du duplicate. Hey. Here we are. So, when in when you're on GitHub, let's do that. I am. Uh, still a bit of an, um, a beginner here. I do not use the command line GitHub thing. That confuses me a lot, but I'm trying. I have it open next to the, the GUI tool, and I try to use the command tool, and then when I get impatient, I just go to the GUI tool too quickly, and I click on things. Um, but the, did it start? Did it? Yep. Let's stop that. It does take a while. Okay. So, Let's go to GitHub then. I have a private thing here. Here's my SQL audit. And here's my code, my SQL. Uh, oh, wait. This works better if I zoom. Zoom it. Um, Uh, 
Um, so for me as a DBA, when I test my SQL stuff, all my uh, code looks a bit like this. Uh, there's an appveyor.yaml. This tells appveyor what to do. Uh, and um, there's the audit.sql. Um, HPT is something from the department I work for at the company I work for, never mind that. But the audit.sql does something in SQL Server and later on I need to test if that succeeded. So I also have a test directory and inside the test directory, I'm guessing you can guess what are inside the test directory are test the tests, of course. Now, I have two kinds. I have stolen something from the DBA tools um, uh, repository because it's all open, you can steal stuff, I like that. Um, so they, there is an appveyor.pester.ps1 and all it does is it grabs all the pester tests that are there, runs them, and when everything is done, it grabs the result and posts it to a uh, URL inside appveyor. So on the appveyor GUI, you can see if your tests have run successfully or not. So it gives feedback to appveyor because, remember, this machine gets destroyed as soon as it's done. You can't go in and see if your tests have succeeded or what the result was. It will be gone, right? It destroys it. The, uh, and the other one is just my tests for my, for my code. Now, if I change something in my code, let's do that. It should. Let's open up ISE. And I have it here. GitHub, SQL, yeah, here we go. SQL audit. And then, oh, yeah, show you the YAML thing. My, oh, my code is not PowerShell. I wanted to show code, but it's in. Um, let's just do that with the old trusted notepad. GitHub. And then okay, audit. And here's my app there. And this is all it does here. Show you like this. So you tell it which image you need. Is this big enough? Does this work in the back? Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> Usually you go, is this big enough? And the guy in the front, you know, the guys in the front go, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean you guys. I'm sure you can see. I, I uh, run into things now where uh, these projectors are starting to, um, the, um, the, um, the resolution. Man, I need a coffee. Uh, everybody wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the resolution is starting to get bigger, so I, I don't have to put my laptop on a, a, a lower resolution anymore, which means without my reading glasses, it's hard for me to see when I sit down. You see me do this. <laughs> I get away with it because I blow things up and I stand here and then that, oh, okay. oh well. If you see me sitting typing like this, um, I, yeah, I just laugh at the gray hairs. Oh well, I've been in IT since 1989. My first paid job in IT, 89. Okay, this is testing code in 2017, 1989, phone, this is a true story, phone rings, customer on the phone, I have a stop at line number 3517 or something, I would have to go to the cabinet, grab a big old file, open it up, you remember these printed papers that are, uh, have a green line and a white line? and. A, that was all the code. I had to go to line number 31 something something, read what it says. Oh, he's, he's invoicing and the, the guy he's invoicing to is gone. He probably removed it. He can't find it. Did you remove that company? Yes, I did. Okay, go to another terminal, add him again, then go to the printer, put the printer back, three dots, big printers like this. You put a box in the front, a box comes out in the back. Line printers, they print a whole line at once. Uh, you, you know, some people go, yeah, I know these things. <laughs> um, these days, airports are the only places where I see matrix, not matrix printers, right? Um, and they have to, on the spot, reprogram, help the guy reprogram the software by telling him on the phone what to type. Because there's no remote stuff. No, that didn't happen. So you have to tell him to build in a little loop in the program to continue exactly where, he, where it went wrong. 
And then do not press save because it was a sort of, it was called business basic. And then just hit run. And you hear a long nothing because it was doing the invoicing without actually printing anything. And at some point it would hit a line where it broke. And in the background you'd hear the printer. And it, okay, go to the printer and see if it works. And you don't hear a response because you already ran to the printer. And then he comes back, yep, exactly on the right spot. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just talk to them on the phone. That actually should be a good one for Siri and whatnot. I'm, I'm not allowed to touch Siri anymore. I, I, um, have you guys seen uh, The Big Bang Theory? Uh, they have this episode where this guy, Raj, falls in love with Siri, and he tells Siri, you can, you can call me um, sexy, yes, you can call me sexy, and I thought that would be cool, I'd try that. So I tried it, and I cannot switch it off any, anymore. <laughs> I tried switching it off, but it doesn't work, I don't know why. Um, Siri, what's my name? To James, but you asked me to call you Andre. Oh. <laughs> it, Carmen fixed it. She was fed up with it. Let me show you how that works. Ah, good. For a long time, it said sexy. So I, I haven't got Siri, but I have got Cortana and I have got Alexa. So my wife keeps saying, why do you keep bringing these women into my house and talking to them? <laughs> so yes, I think to be more modern as we were at the time, I think uh, I should just be able to talk to Cortana or whatever and have them fix my code. Uh, clearly, they, they can see what's wrong with it, right? I mean, anyhow, let's continue with this. <laughs> um, and your, to get back to your question, Richard, on how do you put SQL Server, how do you put that on the box? It's already on the build machine. They, they're, they have configured a whole lot of stuff on their build machine. There's a whole list on the AppVayer uh, website, so you can see what's on the build machine by default, but it's not switched on. All the SQL servers are switched off, and you have to specify which one you want. So all I have to do here is say, services, MS SQL 16, done. And it starts up with SQL Server. That's how easy it is. A little trick if you want more than one SQL Server. They also have 2012, 2014. Um, so if, if you're okay with having a 2014 and a 2016, and you don't need like two 2016s or something, uh, if that works for you, but you do need two, you need to go in first with some code and change the port because they're all default instances. So you have to have one of them run on a different port and then start it manually. You can't do it here. You can't switch them both on because they'll both one of them will fail. That won't work. But if you just need one, that's all you need. Sorry, what was that? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. As, as I think I said before, all the best questions about stuff that's coming later in the presentation. <laughs> you are an amazing audience. <laughs> so what I'm doing there, um, the sec the, the after, in, uh, after services, there is the install part. And all I do is tell it to uh, run some PowerShell, the dash ps. I run some PowerShell and um, for some reason I wanted to install the latest SQL Server module from the gallery and it, I needed to set the uh, PS repository for some reason. Rob is shaking his head, I'm doing it all wrong. Uh, I, I don't find that SQL Server module from the gallery is as good as others. Um, you're doing that absolutely right. Ah, so here's the cool thing. In order to have the SQL Server module before, tell me if I'm wrong here, you needed to have Management Studio installed on a machine. How annoying is that, right? You, in order to have Management Studio before, the before of before, you needed to have the DVD of SQL Server because it was on there. So fast forward a little bit, Management Studio is available as a separate install, as an MSI, so you can install it by yourself. Fast forward a little bit more to two weeks ago, a week oh, ago. Days ago. Days ago. Days ago. The SQL Server module that's delivered with um, Management Studio from the SQL Server team, the tools team, is now available as a separate download and it's in the gallery. So you can just go install and then SQL Server. How cool. Uh, install SQL Server module, right? You, um, you're not getting SQL Server, obviously, but all the. Um, 
all the, all the um, PowerShell stuff that was in that module. Really cool. Now, after I've done that, I have to say build false, because this is meant for developers. It will look for a Visual Studio solution file or other build files and will start wanting to compile my code. But uh, if you have PowerShell, there's nothing to compile. And in my case, I have a SQL file. It's also nothing to compile. I'll just have to run that SQL file on the SQL server. So I don't have anything to compile. So I just say build false. And then I do a before test. Why do I set that environment thing there? Oh, no, I just printed it. I was testing it. I don't set anything. I was checking if it was there because I was trying stuff with it, but it didn't work. And I thought, I'm, am I going crazy? So I did the old school thing, print. Uh, let me show, show me this thing. <laughs> Um, and then um, I have three steps that I need to do in my case for my test. I have to create a database, I have to uh, run this SQL file, and I have to execute the stored procedure that comes out. Uh, I know I had to put, for the SQL geeks in the room, I know I'm using a hyphen in the name, you shouldn't do that, and that's why I have to put brackets around it, but this is a naming convention from a large corporate place where I work. And I do not want to argue with architects three rooms away. So I just put the dash in between brackets around the top, right? It's in a document, and a document is wholly not the code, right? Yes. It, it also means that make sure that all of your SQL developers are properly writing their code, because if they don't put square brackets around it, it won't work. <laughs> and, yeah, that's what happened to me the first time I tried this. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much experience you have, I still do. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in the end, I run that, um, when you see test script, I run that uh, appveyor.pester once, which runs all the tests. And then um, the appveyor.pester dash finalize, which collects the information from the tests and post it to appveyor. Um, you can do other stuff in between, but I, I just cho chose to do the two steps right after another. I don't have to do anything in between. So far, so good. Does this look useful? Cool. Um, one last thing that you see there, the, um, the on finish. I'll show you later what that does. I'll, uh, I'll Actually, I'll unblock it and run it. How about that? Yeah, so we can see. That would be cool. So what, oh, what I'm doing is I'm commenting this. I'll save it. Then I need to. Where's my GitHub client? Where did it go? It started. No, it just didn't start. Best be the one demo fail. I said I, I I like to use the GitHub client and not the command line, and it's making me use the command line. How uh, shall we do? Get, get process, get. Star, get star. I have to. Oh. Both of them, kill them all. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Stop. Process. That's it. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I did two sessions before here, and I had Jeffrey Snover in them both times. <laughs> you don't, you guys don't scare me at all anymore. <laughs> um, shall I just try to start it again? Takes a while. I know this. Oh, yeah. So my audit repository. It's Changes. So it saw the changes that I did in GitHub 
to the file that this is local. So uh, I need to do a hello from Nover, commit message, commit. And then press the sync button here. And then when it's doing that, I shall go over to um, GitHub. And it should, at some point, you see lots of my tests fail because I play around with it a lot. Um, and also, if you have the RDP thing, when the thing is ready with the spinning, when that spinning thingy stops, here we go, switch over. This is cool for demos. Yep, queued, here we go. I'll click on that, and it should start building. Ah, it starts quickly, good. Um, I, I love this stuff. It just, I change something in the code, and somewhere on this planet, something picks it up and goes, tests it for me. Uh, I do not have to grab my code, open Management Studio, stick it in, F5, test a few things. No, do that once, and then write your tests for it, and I feel like a developer almost. It's, it's, um, almost. I said almost. Um, <laughs> no, I have discussions with developers, especially the ones that use uh, ORMs. I love those. Yeah. <laughs> they managed to kill a database with a few lines of code. It's kind of amazing. So, uh, what you see here, let me zoom that in, is it has r done all these things that were in my little YAML file. It, that was all I needed. So here, you see that uh, uh, the build started, it got my code from Git. Um, it ran the install script, so the PS repository to set that right. It got, it got the SQL Server module. It started SQL Server because I said I wanted SQL Server, so it just gave me one. And um, there's this little print thing that I did. Then it did the invoke SQL commands, and then the app layer passed the test are running. And here you see the tests. So fully automated, don't have to do a thing. It just goes through as my first word. Oh, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a nice special effect there. So the code that I unblocked is uh, a bit of PowerShell code that comes from the Avair guys. They have it in their repository, and there's code samples on their website. And all, I have them in, in, in my um, Avair file, so if I want to test something, if something breaks and I need to take a look on the system, I want to I check. That doesn't work normally because once your test is done, whether it fails or succeeded, the machine is removed. It's thrown away. It's done. It's gone. Right? What are you doing, Rob? <laughs> are you playing with my computer? <laughs> what are you? What were you trying to do? That's totally fine. <laughs> you owe me a, a beer. How about that? That's cool. Here we go. Now, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, it's a good thing that people don't didn't have to pay for this conference. I, oh, wait. <laughs> Um, so, in, um, so the machine gets thrown away when you're done with your test. Whether it uh, uh, succeeds or fails doesn't matter. Done, gone, right? So this is why this pester test script posts the result of the test to a URL that pester, uh, that um, Avair makes available. So on the on a different tab, you can see the outcome of your test, but you can also still see the the console output. This gooey stuff uh, sticks around. You can see all your tests and whatnot, but more importantly, if you want to take a peek on one of these boxes and you do not want it to go away, uh, there's this there's one line of code that I did here. Uh, this is a PowerShell thing. It gets it from the uh, repository, from uh, the AppLayer guys themselves, and it switches on the remote desktop, creates a user and a password, shows it in the console, and then it blocks the build from being destroyed. Um, in this case, because it's a private build anyway, nobody can see this. I've, this is a paid uh, subscription. I don't mind if they print the username and the password here for the duration of the machine being alive. This will be gone when the machine dies anyway. 
But if you want to, and you're doing an open source thing where you can use the free AppVayer or whatnot, you can uh, encrypt your password inside the settings in AppVayer, and then it won't show you the password. It will just say, oh, you have this password that you specified yourself. You can specify it yourself, obviously. And then it will just use that one, right? Me, I didn't specify anything, lazy, and it just gives me the password that I need to use. So now, I can go in. And let's, let's, what did I do? Okay. Let's grab this, MSDSC, just like that. Then I need the password. Do that. And if all works well, I get to get a remote desktop connection. Ah, it looks nicer. To the Abveyor build machine. Now, um, we can take a look around on this thing right away. Let me show you the important, important bits first. It's not a very beefy machine. Um, but this is a cool, a cool way to uh, uh, not make the uh, machine disappear. It will just hang around. You have one hour uh, in total. So when your machine starts up, you have one hour. Uh, you can block it, but if it has been blocked for an hour, it will get destroyed. The, the test will fail because you blocked it for an hour and there was no success. So it will fail uh, because you, you, your time was up. Right? So if you have tests that take longer than an hour, Sorry, can't use this. It's not settable. You can't buy a longer duration of something that's not in their plan. Uh, the free and the paid ones are all the same. It's one hour. That's what you get. So if you can do your stuff in one hour, cool. But probably if you're sitting here thinking, hmm, mine is 55 minutes, I can use this. Um, maybe not, right? <laughs> um, but what you're getting here is a machine with, uh, well, the, the it's a dual core, I think, what you're getting, or a single core, what is it? Dual core, I think. And two gigabytes of memory, which for a lot of, yeah, for a lot of my scripts, it's okay. For testing inside SQL Server, two gigabytes is not a lot. But for a lot of my scripts, this will work. Uh, also, what you have on a file system, a little trick there. Uh, file system, this PC. So you have 32 gigabytes available out of the 150. If that is not enough, there is a directory here. Uh, what was it? Qt2 or something. I'll go. Okay, let's not try to find this thing. But there was a. Uh, there is a directory. If you look around on this system, there is a directory that has tools for testing. A re um, uh, phone applications and one is for mobile development. If you do not need that, you can throw it away. And it is in itself, it's like 25 gigabytes or 30 gigabytes or something of stuff that if you don't need it and you need the space, throw it out. If you have something that produces a lot of output or something, you can do that. Um, now, when you're done looking around, and it has management studio and everything, so you can log into your SQL server and, and test your stuff. So, so there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do. It's pretty cool. If you don't like the management studio that's installed, just install a new one via the app there. Now, to get rid of this thing, all I need to do is this file. Do I'm sure inside of VM that no, it, it won't work. But it's uh, the zoom. It doesn't work in, because I'm inside uh, an RDP connection. But the name of the file is delete me to continue build.txt. Pretty obvious what to do, right? So I'm going to throw that file away, and it all. After a few seconds, silence. After a few seconds, ah, come on. <laughs> I'll just throw it out. Build success. See, it already saw that underneath here. Because I threw the file away, uh, I was the, my, my build was successful, then it blocked, then I threw the file away. And now my build is successful because I, st I stopped the blocking. If I would have just left it there, I would get a timeout and a build failed after uh, after the hour is gone. That's all you need to do. So, Rob, this is probably where I can 
Switch over to you. Would that be something? You want this thing on your head? Hello. So, DBA Tools, amazing repository. Started with a few contributors, then a few more, then a few more. Now there are, says some work there, 55 con people contributing. Now we're in a situation where, well, even when there were 12 or 15, we're in a situation where we need to make sure that everything is happening in the right way, in the correct way. So, because our contributors are so amazing, it will, it's worth just pointing out who they are. So, I mean, Chrissy's not doing very well. I mean, you know, look, it's only 135,000 and 101,000 taken away. And then there's Stuart and his amazing backup and restore stuff. And then Claudio's done a lot of really brilliant work and some bloke with a beard. But these are the guys that we love and adore for all the work that we did. But the problem was, we had to make sure we had some consistency. We were very clear that we wanted to make sure that everybody had good help for all of their commands. So if we, uh, that's the idea tool. Woohoo! So you've seen the app there, Pester. No different. It does exactly the same thing. This is our DBA tools app there YAML file, and it goes through exactly as you've, you've just seen. It runs all the tests, and we make sure that we use it add a build number so we can move ourselves forward. And very soon, this 0 0.8 is going to go to 1.0. It's going to be awesome. And to make sure that we had all of our help written correctly, we didn't write a load of pest tests. We spoke to June. Thank you, June, because I know you will listen to this. Thank you, June. June wrote the most amazing pest test for help. That makes sure that every single one of our commands has the right help. And now it makes it really easy because when our different contributors come in and they commit a build into development, they run through and it will fail. And it will say, well, oh, you don't have help with the parameters or you, know, you haven't written the description. You've only got the common stuff there. Ta -da, done. It's as simple as putting this correct file in the correct location and making sure it all ran when that, that there build went. Um, and we could take away. We can take that even further because we can test our code as well. Now these are, you know, we're DBAs, and that's why I said now we are developers as well because we have to get into this world, um, all working together and doing this stuff. So when we're working in AppVia, we say thank you to Warren. Again, we keep it in every single one of these um, tests that we write for each function because it's really important to say thank you to the people that help us do all of our work. Warren wrote this script, meant that I didn't have to worry about it. And the important bit is these special environmental variables that AppVair have got that enable you to navigate around where you are in the file system on that machine that's spun up. And then, we just have some pester tests. First one, script analyzer. Best way of making sure that all of our contributors are writing good and proper PowerShell code, use the script analyzer rules, pass them through into pester. If then doing something that's incorrect, it goes through. The first time I ran that against the DBA tools repo, I nearly cried because we had hundreds of stuff. All the code that I'd written, all the code Chris had written, Claudia, all these brilliant people. We all had little bits and bobs where we'd, we'd just use where instead of where objects, or we hadn't defined parameters, or all the other good things that we need to make sure that we're doing. But we're working on fixing, we're pretty good now, I think, for fixing most of those. But any new commands that come in aren't building up that level of debt because they have to pass the test. And, and of course, this is just pester testing. So we can mock all of our objects. 
and in, we're testing a database owner. So we mock ourselves a little object with some things that we expect. We run our tests, and if they pass, great. And of course, everybody knows that means that when Stuart comes along and says, oh, that, that function's really good, but actually I can see something we can do better there, we make sure that it still fulfills the original goals of the function, or that he has to write the test of, oh, no, we're going to do it differently now. We don't need to return this. It's all really good stuff. I approached the challenge of having a defined uh, database to be able to run some tests against in a different way than the way Andre did. Because what I did, oh, there's test block. Uh, let's try this one instead. Is as follows. If we're not at a finalized part of running our pest to test, what I want you to do is I want to set the location to where our SQL is on our app player and grab with SMO the default backup directory. I don't even have to worry about where it is. I can just go and grab it. And then I invoke a web request to a shared backup that I've got. Now this happens to be just a backup that I use for other demos for precisely this. So anybody can download it and run through my code and make sure they're doing the same thing. Which is kind of the same as what we want to do with our tests. We want to make sure we have a, a known state that we can run some code against and make sure that it's interacting with it in the way that we expect. Again, all we're going to do is grab our default file pass, our default log pass, Obviously, as Andre has said, we've only got a certain amount of disk space, so it, you're not going to be able to do a massive database, but you only have the machine for an hour, so you're not going to be able to restore a massive database either, and then run all the tests that you want to run on it. Um, and then, then we have uh, use the restore SQL database command and restore to the localhost slash SQL 2016. So that's how we access our 2016 um, version of SQL on our app there. And we've got a database called Provider Demo. And then we do the same thing again, import our pester, invoke our pester tests, export them out, out it comes, we see everything that's going on. And first of all, we'll have a test. True should be true. Excellent. I'm going to get one green line at least. I'm going to pass one test just for the sake of showing what's going on. But secondly, it should have a database. And actually, the test name is not correct because the test name should be, it should have a database that's called provider demo. Access the uh, SMO object, which we've done in our before all at the beginning of our test. Grab the database as the name should contain to provide a demo. One of my favorite things that I see goes wrong with pester tests is people want to do server.databases.name pipe contain, should contain provide a demo. Won't work. Because contain in pester world means is inside a file. But pester is just PowerShell. I and mean, we all know PowerShell, so we know that that is going to return a true if there is a database called provider demo in that object. And then I'm going to run these tests. And these are actually operational validation tests. But I want you to understand that you can let your imagination run wild and move yourself forward in whatever way you think. Because I know that I have a provider demo database in a certain fashion. I can now write some tests to make sure that, they, that the code that I'm running functions in the way that I expect. I'm going to show Andre quite how beautiful and simple it is to check my code in with VS Code. So we click onto our source control model. It says message. Wow. Andre, do it like this. Okay. And it says, press control and enter. 
And now we have created ourselves a commit. And then we can go, think. this action will push and pull commits to and from orange and master, because we've got our master down here. So we'll say, okay. And we'll just have a look at our output. And what we've got, as we expect, as some people know, is source control within our app there. And there it goes. One of the beautiful things about VS Code, you've seen a lot of VS Code over the last few days. You've seen a lot of people doing demos in VS Code, mainly doing stuff in PowerShell. Don't forget, VS Code can do all sorts of languages. There are hundreds of languages that it can do. And because you're going to be working with inside a repository, you can work on all of those files side by side in one nice light bake editor. You can pick it up and transfer it from Windows to Linux to Mac and back again without worrying you're in the same environment. And then you can source control it and check it in. You can write in YAML for your app there and bingo. Here go all your tests. We're installing our module. Hello. The question is, does AppVeyer support different kind of languages? Um, the honest answer to that question, my friend, is I do not know. So, because we're at such a wonderful and amazing conference, the people in the crowd, this is for the recording, have said that the languages that are available for you to run in AppVeya are anything that will run on a Windows build machine. Obviously makes sense because we're using a Windows build machine. And was I right that, that you can only have Windows? And at the moment, you can only have Windows machines. So we have a look through, build success. Everything has worked exactly as we expected. There are our results, just as we wanted. That's as simple and easy to do as that. And what Stuart and I were discussing literally two minutes before this presentation started was how we could make use of some of this to enable us to better test some of our DBA tools commands by having a known environment. And now it's your turn because you're going to show something that will take this even another step further. Because as we said, there were only uh, 2014, 2016 versions of SQL in there. And we have had a five minute countdown. That thing has stopped a while ago already. Yeah, I pretended I didn't see that. Okay, uh, the question before, can you uh, do complicated th th things like Active Directory and whatnot? Um, the AppVeyor machine, the build machine that you get does support a reboot. There is a command that you can have it reboot or reboot after something that you install and it will come back and finish uh, where the, with the YAML line where it, where it, uh, that it's, that it stayed at. So there is a little bit of functionality there. Installing an Active Directory, no, that's not going to work. Um, what I tried is the following. What I have here, I'll blow that up a bit, uh, an awesome um, uh, this is um, automated lab. This is uh, a few German gentlemen, I think, are building this. This is uh, an automation to build your own uh, lab system. There's, I saw a demo yesterday from something called Lability. It does similar things as far as I could see it, but this is code that allows you to create really complex scenarios really quickly. So I've, I've got, I've, I'm using this because I need a lot of 
clusters. I need I need a domain and a SQL server that's uh, in a domain. Um, and I don't want to build it every time. An automated lab is five lines of code. I just hit a button and it will it will grab the ISOs, build me a, uh, a Windows machine, make an Active Directory, get the other one, join the domain, install SQL Server. Uh, brilliant. So what I'm doing here is doing this inside AppVayor. And um, what it does is instead of building the domain on my Hyper-V box, because that thing cannot connect to my Hyper-V box, does it in Azure. Uh, we have a few minutes of time, so I'll show you the result. But it actually does work from the AppVayor um, uh, VM. So as you can see up the top, I have a, a start file download. This is a part of the AppVayor uh, library. They have a start file download. And I'm downloading automated lab. And then I'm installing it. And I'm running my script that will install my lab for me. Now, normally, you would need ISOs on your machine with, with Windows Server and whatnot. But since I'm doing this in Azure, Azure has this. You can just tell it to build something there. And I need to give it my basically my credentials to Azure. It needs a file that has my access to Azure. So you need to be careful where to put that thing. I have it for testing purposes in my GitHub. And the GitHub is closed. But be careful if you do an open source thing. Don't put your Azure access in that, right? You have to be careful there. But this ran for about 40 minutes from Azure. And it built a complete Active Directory system with VMs and everything inside Azure. So that kind of thing worked. But now I'm stuck a bit because, hey, I've built a whole machine uh, scenario in Azure. Now what? I'm on my build VM. All my t machines that I want to test on are in Azure. How do I get to that, right? I'm a bit stuck there, right? I investigated making a VPN connection to Azure. Unfortunately, building a VPN connection in Azure takes 45 minutes. Um, second problem, downloading the VPN client is a special executable from Microsoft. And it, it has a quiet switch that lets you automate the install. That does not work. Um, what you can do is unpack it and outcome uh, the automate the dialer stuff. The, the, and there's a route file that you can add uh, so you can automate it, but it is a bit convoluted. The only further solution I have seen that is that AppVayor supports you running your own build machines on your own environment. So AppVayor will, you have AppVayor agent installed on your own VMs in your own environment, but 100 euros a month. So not, not, not sure if I'm going to go there. Yep, there's um, uh, a few scenarios that I've been thinking about as well as, as doing. Yeah. We're out of time. Nope, you get two gigs. So one more session, guys. There's no coffee break. The coffee's at the end of the session. Have fun. Thank you.